Hey, Nehemiah chapter 1. Ezra is about rebuilding the temple in Jerusalem. Nehemiah is about the walls of Jerusalem. So when we come to Nehemiah, the, the temple is already built. So we'll pick up the words of Nehemiah, the son of Hachaliah. And it came to pass in the month Chesiel, uh, that'd be about this, uh, this uh, December, that's Persian calendar, in the 12, 20th year, as I was in Shishan, the palace, that would be today about Iran, that Hananiah, one of my brethren, Jewish, Hebrew, or even more family, came he and certain men of Judah. And I asked him concerning the Jews that escaped, that gone back with Ezra, the book of Ezra, which were left of the captivity and concerning Jerusalem, going back to Ezra. And notice the, the children of Israel have that name now, captivity. And they said unto me, the remnant that are left of the captivity, there in the province, are in great affliction and reproach. Now watch it. The wall, not walls. The wall of Jerusalem. It's one big wall. Then they how they make, you know, the big wall of China or the, the great wall of China. There'll be a great wall one day. There'll be a big wall. The wall in Jerusalem with the Lord Jesus Christ seated in the midst of the children of Israel. The wall of Jerusalem also is broken down. And the gates, plural, thereof are burned with fire. The city is not built. The wall is not built. The gates are not set up as we concluded Ezra. The temple foundation, the temple has been built, but not the city. And that was one of the letters that they sent to the king. You know, they build up the walls, they build up the foundation of the walls, they're going to build the city. Not according to Nehemiah. Now, roughly, it says that Ezra, and I don't know much about the date, so I'm going to trust them that they know what they're talking about. Ezra's B.C. 457 when you close the book. Nehemiah is B.C. 446. And they come back Closer to Jesus' time, which makes it later, because the Old Testament is going backwards, away from Jesus' time. And there's no way that those they, that letter could be, we're going to build the walls. When the report comes now, after Ezra's been there, they're destroyed. And we'll read more about those walls and gates later. And it came to pass when I heard these words, that I sat down and wept. You will find Jesus weeping over Jerusalem in his ministry as he comes to the close of his ministry, knowing that 70 AD, the city will be destroyed again. Nehemiah is weeping because the city is destroyed. And mourned certain days, we don't know how many, and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. That's what he ought to do. Now there are six prayers of Nehemiah in the book of Nehemiah. Number one is chapter 1, 4 through 11. Chapter 2 is 2, uh, uh, the second one is chapter 2, verse 4. The third one is chapter 4, verses 4, 5, and 9. The fourth time is chapter 5, verse 19. The fifth time is chapter 6, 9, and 14. And the sixth time, the final time, is chapter 13, 14, 22, 29, and 31. Nehemiah is a praying prophet. He has seen a lot of anguish and hardship because of sin. And he said, I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven, the great and terrible God, God that afflicts terror. Look what he's just done to Jerusalem and Judah. 
because of our sins, look at the consequences. Not only is our city destroyed, our temple destroyed, we're not even in our homeland. And that brings Ezra to fear, that brings Nehemiah to fear. And many of the Jews that go back are fearing. And it's kind of sorry because that rich man that goes into hell, according to Jesus, he had no fear. Terror is the power that God has. He, it's not a terrible God that, you know, he's just wicked, mean, and grumpy. And, no, that's not what that terror means. The God that can impose terror upon us. If you are a child of God and you do wrong, the terror that God can, you know, as a father corrects his children. That keepeth covenant. And what's the covenant? That the Jews will always be God's people forever and ever and ever. That this thing that we're in Babylon right now, captivity, this is just a moment of time. This is, we're being punished. But God's not done with us. God made a covenant with David. There will be no more king in Jerusalem. Until the Lord Jesus Christ comes back on horseback, picks up those Jews, Bobby Settle Preacher, and travels up the King's Highway and comes back into like Joshua and proclaim Jerusalem as the land of the Jew and sit down upon David's throne. That's a covenant that God made with David that has not happened yet. And it will happen. And mercy. Mercy. God's a merciful God. Satan is not. For them that love him. So to obtain God's mercy is to love God. And deserve his commandments. Now that's not the church age. That's not us. We are saved by grace and by faith. Not of works. Let thy ear now be attentive. That's the first time that word shows up, attentive. God, open your ears. Now, he's not saying that God doesn't listen. That's not the implication. God, I'm going to pray. Hear me. And thy eyes be open. That doesn't mean that God closes his eyes. Nehemiah is reaching out to God in a personal way. Lord God, look at me and hear me, please. That thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servants. So see, he wants God to pay attention to Nehemiah himself. Which I pray before thee now, day and night. So this is not just once prayer. This is something he's been doing day and night. The children of Israel in captivity, there's no homeland now. And Solomon said when he dedicated the temple, if they would repent and get right with God, look upon them to bring them back. Moses, we're going to see Moses be quoted in a moment. If they repent and get right. That's what Nehemiah is doing. Day and night for the children of Israel. Thy servants. So they're still God's servants even though they're not in the land. They're still God's servants today. And I'm going to assume that would be even more joy to God if a, if a Hebrew, Jewish, or Israelite today believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. The angels in heaven rejoice. I think it would make God even more, though he's not a respecter of person, Israel is God's people. Thy servant, and confess the sins of the children of Israel. Here's confession. We have sinned. That's why we're in the predicament we are in. Which we have sinned against thee. We must come to the conclusion whether we're dealing with a lost man or dealing with ourselves being saved, our sins are against the holy and righteous God that says, be holy for I am holy. We got to get things right with God. Then we got to get it right with the people we sinned against. And the Bible says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. That's the great, merciful, and mighty God that we have. He can wipe off the sins off the book by the blood of Jesus Christ. But then, 
Yeah, we sinned against God, but we got to make restitution to the people we sinned against. But the first thing that we sinned against is God. We have sinned against thee, both I, look at that. Nehemiah is putting himself first. And my father's house, his family, have sinned. Don't go about saying the sins of others. I include myself as a sinner because I'm the sinner. We have dwelt very corruptly. Here's a confession. Against thee. Again, God, we sinned against you. We've done corrupt before you, God. That's not a word in today's modern church. Corrupt. Repentance. God, when, when, when you see us, we're decaying, we're rotting, we're just, ugh. You know, when you open up the car trunk of your car and your battery is just coated with that white powdery, you got to take care of it. You cannot let that battery terminal sit like that. It'll only get worse. When you look at the, well, not today because they're plastic, but when I grew up, when you had cars in my time, and you look at the fender and it's rusting and rotting away, you got to take care of that or it'll just keep rotting and rusting. And that's what Nehemiah said, Lord, we're rotting, we're rusting, we're decaying in your eyes. We're not getting better. We're breaking down against thee and have not kept the commandments, true, nor the statutes, true, nor the judgments, true, which thou commandest, that's the first time that word shows up, thy servant Moses. That's the law. So evidently, Nehemiah has some conclusion of the law to say we violated it. That's why we're here. We're here because we sinned against God. We're not there at home because we sinned against God. The reason why we're here in Babylon we sin. It is God's mercy that Ezra and Nehemiah went back and I heard the temples built. Now, as we're in Nehemiah's prayer, right now, Nehemiah, we've read Nehemiah. Or you should have read Nehemiah. We know he's going to build the city. He's going to build the walls. He's going to build. Nehemiah doesn't know this yet. Nehemiah has not read the, the book of Nehemiah to know what's going on. Nehemiah has no idea what greatness God has for him. That he's talking about this city and he's going to have Nehemiah build those cities. He says the last word Nehemiah gets right now. And see, we read chapter 2. We read chapter 3. We read chapter 4. We read all of Nehemiah. But writing Nehemiah as president right now, he's sitting down, he's in tears, he's mourning, he's fasting, he's praying to God. He has no idea what's going to happen next. And so do we in our life. Man, we have no idea right now, with my wife and I with medical issues, we have no idea what God's going to I wish I could go to the book of Stiley, the book of Tracy, the book of the Haywards and say, oh Lord, I see what chapter 8 is going to do. Okay. But we can't do that. And we look at right now frustrated and just, you know what? We may have something big happen. But we don't know. Nehemiah has no idea what God's going to call him to do. Right now we're just praying. He is saying we're sinners. You know what God can do with any sinner that repents and gets right with him? He can do great wonders. Look at all the stories we know about sinners that got saved and God's used them. Some of them we read books about them. I'm, um, I think throw up my, I'm reading about uh, George Mueller right now. Man, what a remarkable man. I read about other saints. I read about uh, uh, Claire and William Booth. The Salvation Army. I read about others. And there are people I've never even heard about. And once they got saved, once they served the Lord, once they announced their sins, once they confessed their sins, once they got right with God, then God used it. That they would have no idea. In April 21st, 1987, when I got saved, 
I would have no idea I would be preaching on the street to people who lost and say, I would have no idea that God's allowing me to sit back and have people come to me with questions and they'll help them. I had no idea I had led people to the Lord Jesus Christ. I had no idea that I would bring people out of a perverted modern Bible to the King James Bible. I had no idea I would influence other Christians to do right. All I did was, Lord God, I'm a sinner. I repent before you, and I don't want to go to hell. And I don't know how soon that afternoon, it was a Saturday afternoon, I know that. I don't know how soon after that afternoon I did my first sin after that, but I sinned. Nehemiah is repentant of his sins. Remember, I beseech thee, the word, your word, Lord, remember your word. That thou commandest thy servant Moses, saying, if they transgress, and they did, that's where you go against what you're supposed to do, I will scatter you, um, uh, I will scatter you aboard, abroad the, uh, among the nations, and it happened. Seventy years ago, from Ezra, it happened. They've been in with Ezra. When they start to go back, they've been in Babylon for 70 years. But, here's a good but. If you turn to, unto me, if you repent and get right, and keep my commandments, that's not church age, and do them, that's not a Christian. Though they were of, yeah, though they were of you, cast out unto the uttermost part of the heaven, what they are today, what they are in, the, in the, uh, Nehemiah's time. They're all over the world today. Nation of Israel, though people say God finished with them, nation of Israel will get right before the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ will bring them into the promised land as Joshua has brought them into the promised land and settle them forever, giving them a brand new heart, cleansing them of all their sins, forever to be ever God's people. And on the other parts of the heaven, yet yeah, will I gather them from thence, both now and later, and will bring them into the place that I have chosen to set my name there, Ezra. And it's going to happen under Jesus. Now, I've never heard of that temple is going to be set up in Jesus' time. There's a temple in the tribulation period. I don't know if Jesus uses the same temple that's in the tribulation period or if he builds fresh. I don't, I've never been taught that. But Jesus will do what Ezra and Nehemiah has done, rebuild that whole city. Right and correctly. That's Jerusalem where his name is the base. Under David and Solomon. Now these are thy servants. Now here's the praise. And thy people, the Jews, the Hebrews, they are God's people, whom thou hast redeemed by thy great power, Egypt, and by thy strong hand, all the mighty wonders done to Egypt, and brought them out in that Passover night under the blood of the lambs, the Passover. Behold the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. Now these are thy servants unto thy people, whom thou hast redeemed by thy great power and by thy strong hand. O Lord, I beseech thee, let now thy ear be attended to the prayer of thy servant, Nehemiah, and to the prayer of thy servants, the Jews, their pray Daniel's praying, Ezra's praying, Jeshua is praying. I guarantee all those lists of names that went back with Ezra, they're praying. Of thy servants who desire to fear thy name and prosper. Oh, that isn't the prosperity of God. You stole it from the Jews. Lord, we repent and get right with you. Okay, bring us to the land. Build that temple. Build the city. Let's have happy, peace, glorification forever and ever. That's not church. That's not Christian. You've stolen the blessing from the Jew. Our prosperity comes... After we die, when we get to New Jerusalem, we get the new body, we get the new 
uh, uh, no more tears, no more sorrow, no more pain, no more sin. The devil's kicked out, and we have a place for God forever, for all eternity. Right now, the Bible says, all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Jesus said, marvel not that the world hates you. Oh, you're saved now? Well, that may not solve your cancer. Oh, you're saved now? That may not fix your family. It may or it may not. When you get the prosperity gospel, you're stealing it from Israel. And prosper. They will prosper. Temple's built. Pretty soon the city's going to get built. But they'll fail by the time Jesus comes. I pray thee, thy servant this day, and grant him mercy. So you can ask God for mercy. In the sight of this man. This man. Who's that? What man? The king, our Xerxes. Nehemiah has no idea what he's praying. The next chapter, Lord willing, he's going to be doing his job before King Xerxes. And I'll give it away because it's wonderful and great. He's, he, he's the wine bearer. He gives the king the cup of wine. And the king looks at him and says, why are you sad? And he gets scared because you're not to be sad in the king's presence. And he had one of them Nehemiah prayers. Let's we'll study Lord willing, chapter 2. And next thing you know, the king's consulting his wife, the queen. They're like, okay, Nehemiah, we'll let you go back to Jerusalem. And even still, he doesn't know what he's going to do yet. He gets to Jerusalem, and he takes his donkey going right around, and he says, man, this place is destroyed. Look at this place. It is bad as my eyes and what I've heard. Then God lays on his heart, you're going to fix it. But it had to start with the king. For, and he had, you know, when we pray, we let the Holy Spirit pray because the Holy Spirit prays for us. Jesus prays for us because we don't know what we all pray. And when the Holy Spirit allows us to have words, we don't know what we're saying to petition God. And yet God hears. Pray this man. For I was the king's cupbearer. And that's the only time that shows up. Cupbearer. That word. So. Here's a man. Chapter 1 closed. And I gave you the, you know, the, what happens in the book. But right now Nehemiah is. Lord God I need help. We need help. Lord we have sinned against you desperately. We have gone against you. We have defiled you. We are wicked. We are vile. No, I gotta go to work, Lord God, help me with that with that king. I gotta go do my job. And Nehemiah has no idea what chapter two, and there's no chapter marking, but in chapter two, he has no idea what God's gonna open up the door for him in his prayer. It's amazing what God will do.